What's going on internet? IG here again today and we're continuing the OpenSUSE 13.1 series and the why I switched to OpenSUSE. Okay, so in the last couple of videos we've had a look at both installing uh, new applications to your computer, uh, enabling repositories uh, and also customizing the look and feel of the distribution as well as enabling default apps and also tweaking the looks of OpenSUSE with the font hinting and stuff like that. Now all that is pretty much stuff that you would do once off and once it's done, it's done. Today I want to be looking at some of the stuff that you're going to want to check on an ongoing basis, at least some of the things that I've discovered as I've been using OpenSUSE as a daily driver. And that is YAST. Most of it revolves around YAST. It's a very powerful tool and uh, if you want to ever, if anything ever goes wrong with your distribution or if, uh, or if you're just wanting to tweak different parts of your distribution then you're going to want to come in here and start looking around. So first of all you have your online updater. When it comes to updating the uh, OpenSUSE handles things in two different ways. It handles the core system updates which will uh, which will take care of things such as security and patches. Uh, and Those are things that will not really affect the apps that you are running uh, and it won't really affect the stability of your system much at all. In fact it will probably enhance your system stability and security long term. This is really important for those of us who are running in a very mission critical environment that cannot be bothered updating uh, apps and libraries and packages every other day. So online update through YAST will handle just security and patches and that's all it will do. Uh, it won't affect any other part of the system and I think this is while some people complain about it as being uh, double-handed and uh, and sort of clumsy, I find it to be a fantastic feature as I can keep my system up to date and secure with patches but not update everything in my system to the point of it breaking. Um, so think of this as like the Windows update without anything else added to it. So it's just going to take care of the core system and any major security issues that might pop up. That's online update through YAST. Now if you're wanting to update all of your software, then a simple software update uh, from the open uh, from the open SUSE repositories uh, this is handled through gnome and as you can see I do have some software updates available that I can download and install it's pretty simple the software update updates pop up you click install and away they go now software management we have kind of looked at already um, it's not the best software management program in the world but once you get used to it and also once you get used to the zipper command line function then it's it's pretty easy by default, it's grouped. The apps are grouped into their different uh, genres or categories or what they achieve. And as you can see here, they're not really sorted in any other way apart from alphabetical. Packages are there, apps are there. It's a bit of a mess. One interesting thing that I really do like is the patterns, and that is a pretty simple way to install a collection of packages that will achieve a common task. And as you can see here, for example, if you wanted to have a remote desktop functionality in your computer, then you simply tick that pattern, uh, click apply, and it will download and install all of the things that you need uh, to use remote desktop. That uh, the same can then be said for any sort of developer's environment that you might be working in, which I think is very handy. As you can see, they've got a lot of different options here: GNOME, KDE, .NET, C, C++, Integrated Development, RPM Building, Java, Linux. It just goes on and on. So, a simple tick of the box there, and you will have uh, what you need installed. You can also see what apps are available in the different repositories. So you can see in GNOME apps, there's quite a bit here that I can choose from, uh, and that's all pretty fun. Now one thing that you will want to do if you have, uh, if you are chasing more up-to-date software, you will want to enable uh, the switch installed packages to the versions in this repository. By default, OpenSUSE will not switch the, uh, the software that you have installed on the system through its own repositories. It will not automatically switch those to what is available in another repository. This is, I believe, a stability move so that you will choose which software that you want installed from a more up-to-date repository. Uh, again, fantastic feature, in my opinion anyway, for what I'm trying to achieve. So as you can see, in GNOME Apps, we've got quite a few software uh, pieces of software enabled, um, but some of those aren't from the GNOME Apps. So if I wanted to use all of the uh, packages and all of the libraries that GNOME Apps has available in their repository, which is going to be more up to date than what OpenSUSE 13.1 offers, I can say switch installed packages to the versions in this repository. That way I'll get more up to date versions of, their, uh, of, their, of the software that I have installed on my system and all will be well. In theory, of course, if something breaks, 
then I'll have to switch them back to the original system. You'll also usually find a lot more community plugins and extensions for the different apps available in the uh, in third-party repositories as you would expect. Same can be said for Pac-Man repositories and literally any other repository that you might have enabled. Okay, so that's software management. Uh, the rest of it is a pretty simple tick and hit apply, just like in Synaptic Package Manager on Ubuntu, so it's not that difficult to get a handle on. All right, so now let's talk about backing up. Now, there are two ways you can back up in the GNOME desktop. There's the standard backup tool, which you will see that looks very familiar from Ubuntu, the Deja Dupe backup tool, and that will just back up your own, uh, your own personal files and folders um, to a tar.gz wherever you want to place that. Uh, then on the more system level in YAST you've got a system backup which you can configure down to the nth degree as to what you want backed up when, uh, what events might trigger it and where you want to put that whether it's on a network share, a timed network share and as you can see I don't have any automatic backup profiles saved while this is a bit more fiddly than Deja Dupe, it's going to give you way more control than, uh, than something like that tool so it is advisable to set something like this up once you are happy with your system and, uh, and it's also worth taking an image of your system uh, through this backup tool. You'll be able to take a snapshot of your system at that time so that you can restore to it if something goes horribly wrong. As you can see, they have a system restoration tool which will then be able to roll back to that particular backup archive uh, in the case that anything goes wrong. And again, this is just uh, boasting more of the power of what Yast is capable of. While these tools may not look pretty, they have so many options and, uh, and they have so much customization in them that you can have so much control over your system and I think that's what I really enjoy about it. Also, if you're working in a corporate environment and you need proxy settings or you might need to configure a mail server or an LDAP client uh, or a Windows domain membership, you can handle it all through Yast here and it, and it integrates very, very tightly. The firewall is also something that you might want to check out every now and again to make sure that you're happy with what uh, rules have been applied. As you can see, I am pretty lax at the moment because I haven't really taken my laptop too many places, uh, so I will crack that down in the future. But one feature that I really like with OpenSUSE is their security center. That gives you a basic overview of all of the options and uh, configurations that you have enabled on your system and what kind of security outcome that gives you. As you can see here, for example, the security status I have on using secure file permissions is not really enabled at the moment. So they give me a cross there saying that it might be something I want to look into. And this can be said for security overview, password settings, boot settings, login, you name it. All of it can be managed through the security center here, which is pretty cool. Finally, let's talk about sudo, because when you're in the command line and you want to be running as root, you want to be able to use uh, sudo as an alias to be able to get to the root user. Again, this is all something you can configure through Yast, and you can have custom commands that will enable sudo uh, for different users, and say if you don't want a particular user accessing sudo at all, then uh, then you can enable that here. And finally, we have lots of system logs here that you can go through if something has gone wrong in your system. Again, none of these tools are stuff that you can't do in other Linux distributions, but it's not nearly as easy and as customizable as what it is in OpenSUSE. And if there's anything fiddly that they don't have a tool for, they have a simple sysconfig editor, which basically puts a graphical user interface onto uh, everything in their sysconfig file, including desktop hardware network and other system settings like the bootloader, the kernel printing, etc. So that's really all I wanted to cover in this video in terms of administering your system and keeping it up to date and running smoothly. Of course, there's plenty of other stuff in Yast. That, uh, that's worth digging into if you have the time. But for me, this is the stuff that I've been tweaking and using uh, over my time as using OpenSUSE. So I hope you got something out of that. Uh, so once again, if you have any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments section below or on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+, and I will try to get back to you as I can. But thank you all for watching. I hope you're enjoying this series and finding it useful. I will catch you all in the very next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.